In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, as we continue our discussion of how we rear our children to be true Orthodox Christians, we, continue, we shall continue today to speak of how the content, the teaching, and the lessons of great Lent can enable us to do so. Remember two weeks ago when we read the Lord's Gospel about fasting, we pointed out that fasting is a great teacher of obedience because if the child has to discipline himself as to what he puts in his mouth, the most basic form of self-control, then by God's grace he will also be able to do greater things than this and deny himself in greater things. And last week on the Sunday of Orthodoxy, we spoke of how important it is to make clear to our children at all times that there is such a thing as objective reality. The child cannot create his own reality, unlike what he's being taught by so many places, so many people. He cannot create his own reality, but that God is reality and God has created things that are real and we can know those things with our minds. But what is a great obstacle to learning the truth and to training the child? One of the greatest obstacles today is distraction. Because the child's mind, as well as we know in our own lives, our own minds, are being torn apart by the world around us into a thousand different directions. And the human mind, which God created to be a single, clean mirror of his truth, to reflect the glory of God is broken into a thousand pieces like a broken mirror and it cannot reflect the truth. Today, we celebrate a very great teacher of how to heal the mind. And this teacher is St. Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of Thessalonica whose memory we keep every year on the second Sunday of Great Lent. Indeed, the fathers say that this is like a second Sunday of Orthodoxy because it's the triumph in the ninth century of those who venerated the icons was the consummation of the struggles of all the seven ecumenical councils. So the vindication of St. Gregory in the 14th century 500 years later is the vindication of the struggle of the fathers against the medieval heresies of the popes and their theologians. But today I don't need to or wish to speak of the technical details of the theological arguments of St. Gregory, but instead speak of a practical thing and relating it to how we raise our children. And this is that St. Gregory was the great vindicator of the way of life that is called hesychasm. And we know that when we, in Greek when we say esikia, we mean quiet and stillness, repose. It connotes also galimi, calmness. A person with esikia, esikia in his soul is able to make good decisions because he perceives things the way they are. A person with Isaiah in his soul can concentrate and learn both divine and earthly things. And St. Gregory Palamas, our Holy Father, one of the, and one of the great fathers of the Philokalia, was a great defender of the prayer of Jesus and the acquisition of true stillness in the soul, through which a person can attain actually, ultimately, to the vision of God. Now with our children, very practically, we have a great weapon to fight off the devil and to give our children the gift of concentration and attention, both to heavenly things, and then as a byproduct, it will give them attention and concentration on the necessary worldly things they need to take care of, such as their studies and their work. And this is the prayer of Jesus. Kyrie Jesu Christe, et Theu, 
eleison me ton amartolon. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. And a very straightforward, totally simple, non-complicated thing you can do with your children is to sit down in the evening. They don't have to make hundreds of metanias, although a few metanias would be a good idea. For example, 12, before we get started. And then they don't even have to stand. They could actually sit, but sit very still and say, now we are going to say the Jesus prayer a hundred times. And we're going to take turns and daddy will say some and mommy will say some and the children will say some. But you have to sit still and listen. And if they fidget, you take them and you sit them down and make them listen. And if they fidget 50 times during the 100 prayers, you take them 50 times and you sit them down and you make them listen. And after a while, they will begin to like it. Why? Because the heart of the child is much cleaner than ours. It doesn't have all the junk we put in our hearts. So that baptized heart of the Orthodox child loves God. Even if he doesn't think it here, he knows it here. And so hearing the most sweetest and wonderful name of Jesus a hundred times gives warmth to the heart. And the child begins to perceive that this is a very happy time. The time we spend with Christuli and with our family. And then the fact that it's repeated the same prayer same prayer a hundred times that shows the child that concentration and repetition are not bad things, they're good things. And that the norm for the Christian mind is not distraction, but concentration. And this time spent, you could say it takes about 10 or 15 minutes, this time invested in the presence of our divine Lord with our children will reap 10,000 fold. Why? Because the name of Jesus is invested with infinite divine power. The name Jesus is a human name. It was born by Joshua in the Old Testament. It was a known name, a human name. But when at the command of God through the angel, St. Joseph named the son of the virgin, Jesus, Jesus, Yehoshua, which means the Lord is our salvation. At that moment, that human name became forever connected to the second person of the Holy Trinity because our Lord Jesus Christ is not God in a man. He is the God-man. And therefore, Jesus, having been a human name, becomes the name of the hypostasis, of the Logos of God. And so this name has infinite divine power. And when we say it in faith, asking him for mercy, we know that God will invincibly, infallibly, absolutely have mercy on us. Because our Lord promised the night before he died, we read this in his beautiful mystagogy to his disciples the night before he died in St. John's Gospel, which we read at the, the first gospel of the 12 gospel service in Holy Thursday night. He says to his disciples, what you ask in my name, I will do it. So when with faith we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner, we know he will do it. St. Paul says this is the name above every name, that God the Father has exalted him and given him the name above every name. And we, therefore we teach our children concentration, first of all, and above all through the habit of prayer. And as Orthodox Christians, we have been blessed with the true teaching from the Holy Fathers, from the Holy Apostles, 
through all the fathers of the church until this very day, an unbroken tradition of how to pray by invoking the name, the sweetest and all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. Let us get each of our children a Kumbosquinion, and if they lose it, get them another one, just a little one that they can wear with the 33 knots. And say, now tonight we're going to sit down and we're going to go around your little Kumbosquini three times, and we go around three times plus one, that's a hundred prayers to Christuli. And at first, they'll fidget, it's a mess, they'll fight, but after a while, there will be Isikia. They'll be calm. And this calm of those minutes in the home spread to the rest of the day. They invade our hearts, they invade our space, our home. And then we carry that sweetest and warmest presence of Christ with us into the day. And by this, our children begin a foundation of concentration. And they carry that concentration then as a byproduct into their non-prayer activities. Studies, working for mommy and daddy by cleaning the house, and all the things that they need to be doing that will enable the powers of their soul and body to grow and to blossom. But they have to have the foundation <coughs> of concentration and the foundation of concentration lies in the habit of prayer by the power of Christ whose all-powerful name God has given us as a weapon against the enemy for the cleansing of our hearts, for the warmth of the Spirit and for union with our sweetest Jesus Christ. These three great things, if we confess regularly, if we receive Holy Communion frequently, and if we said the prayer of Jesus every day, forcing ourselves constantly, nothing would take away our salvation. Nothing. No power in heaven or earth. Let us therefore give this beautiful gift to our children and beg our Christ to be faithful to his name, to the end of the age, to the prayers of our holy great hierarch, Father Gary Palamas, and all the saints. Amen.